Brooklyn. How can the progressive movement build enough grassroots strength to potentially push Joe Biden to sign a Medicare for all bill? I'm going to start by saying Joe Biden has always been perfectly at the center of the Democratic Party for his entire political career. He's never been (laughs) the Joe. No, hold on. He's never been (laughs) as bad as Joe Manchin or, you know, those red state Democrats that are really Democrats. (laughs) <laughs> he's never been on that level. And yes, he's never been progressive in his entire life. He's never even thought about being progressive. But so, like a pattern that does follow through is that he does what is brought before him. So I think in a world where Medicare for All does pass in both chambers of Congress and gets put on his desk as president, I don't think he's going to just say, nah, and like throw it away because to get there, it needs the support of the Democratic Party. And to have the support of the Democratic Party means should be enough to convince him to support that as well. You're saying he's a liar then because he straight out said from his own mouth he would reject that bill if it came to his desk. Uh, And I've asked other candidates this kind of question, veto question. Let's flash forward. Your president, Bernie Sanders, is still active in the Senate. He manages to get Medicare for all through the Senate in some compromised version, the Elizabeth Warren version or or other version. comes to your desk, do you veto it? I would veto anything that delays providing the security and the certainty of health care being available now. If they got that through and by some miracle, and there was an epiphany that occurred, and some miracle occurred that said, okay, it's passed, then you got to look at the cost. I want to know, how did they find the $35 trillion? What is that doing? Is it going to significantly raise taxes on the middle class, which it will? What's going to happen? So are you he calling, would. are you, are you saying that he's a good <laughs> centrist and then also calling him a liar at the same time? This, this oh, is yeah. the problem. This is the problem. You guys not call Joe Biden a liar on like regular point? This is the yeah, problem. This is, this is the problem with established Democrats. <laughs> they come in and they say things like this. So the Americans want both the public <laughs> option and, and, uh, and Medicare for all. They want both. I think whatever happens is yeah. going to be steps. Yeah. And then ultimately, I think yeah. even Biden wants to get to Medicare yeah. for all ultimately. Eventually. <laughs> like Joe Biden is like, he clearly said, we could put up the clip where he says, if I have Medicare for, if Medicare for all comes to my desk, I veto it. I think that we have to be able to put pressure on Joe Biden. So the first thing to do that is we have to elect more progressives. So we got um, Jamal Bowman coming into office. We have uh, various other people who have won their primaries that hopefully in in November they're going to win and join the squad. So we're going to have the squad, we're going to have squad 2.0, and then we're going to have the Avengers squad when they both combine and hopefully <laughs> they, they're going to be able to, 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 to wreak some havoc and, and finally have, a, I don't want to call them a justice Democrats caucus, but like the, the progressive caucus can be considered a joke at times. They have so many people, but there's even some members of the progressive caucus and the new Democrats. Like how are you part of both caucuses? So I can't even really count on the progressive caucus to have a voice because they haven't been having a voice so far. So we, we need to establish a new caucus that can hold their vote and put pressure on the Biden administration. So I think that's one way. Uh, the other one is just, just primary, man. You just got to yeah, primary everybody. Primary. Every, no, no sacred cows, man. Everybody, yeah. everybody can get it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty yeah, much, yeah. man. That's, that's as simple as it goes. So I'm wondering, let's say we had a Nina Turner running for 2024. Like, when should she jump in? Oh. Now. Right, right now. Just do it now. now. Like, yeah. We need to. We need. Listen. We have to start. I always go back to this point. Our progressive movement needs to start be stronger. We need to mm-hmm. go and say this is what we're going to do. If you're not on board, we're going to go this way. We know, like, we have the people, right? We have mm-hmm. the people. Yeah, maybe we don't have fifty percent. Maybe we don't have, but our movement is strong, mm-hmm. and we need to stop going into. When we get into Congress, they're like, oh, mama beer, mama this, what that. No, we need to go in there. AOC have shown, people show by 70% that they behind AOC. AOC needs to go in there, stop playing nice, and obviously not go like go crazy and stuff, but we need to go and have them take us. Through. And as we continue to pull primary and we continue to say and stop giving our votes, stop saying like, you know, oh, I'm just going to go vote for Biden because 
Trump is worse. Like, you know, don't sell out our vote. Tell them, like, we, we want Joe Biden to tell us what policy he agrees with. And, so, yeah. yeah, let me jump in here real quick. So what if I want to play devil's advocate to people who would say um, it's too early to jump in? Because when you jump in so early, you're going to give the media, who's no, you know, fan of progressives, enough time to, um, you know, quote, unquote, cancel you or come up with a scandal against you you know, to, to drag your name through the mud. You're going to be able, people going to, the opposition is going to be able to do opposition research on you, giving them a lot of time. What do you say to that criticism? They already canceled them. They already canceled them. The media already, Nina's canceled. Bree is canceled. <laughs> like anyone that's like, that hasn't fallen in line and endorsed Joe Biden, mm -hmm. they already canceled them. So at the end of the day, mm -hmm. what do we have to lose, right? All we have to start is building our move for now and mm -hmm. no the stronger we get, the better chance we got in 2024. Yeah, one reason for or a case for going early is Bernie himself. We, we can bring him up a little bit. Um, but basically, one of the reasons why he didn't have a better showing in, in uh, 2016 was because of name recognition. He wasn't that well known nationally. And Tina, uh, she's well known in progressive circles, but she's not that well known nationally. And I think going early will help her get that name recognition. Yeah, and on top of that, just piggybacking off of both of the other two points, it kind of gets the bad taste out of your mouth at the beginning, you know? Like, mm -hmm. you, if they just find out about you at the end, and then back, the, like, right, right, put eight months before the election, they find out, oh, whatever, this person did X, Y, Z, then that's going to sway a lot heavier than if it's right up front four years early, then everyone uh, can say, yeah, we already knew that. That doesn't matter. We still support this candidate. Uh, good point. Good point. All right, Gabe, go ahead. I want to add that I, I disagree with the strategy uh, of, of moving Joe Biden. I think you can't, in many cases, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And in this case, he's shown who he is over decades of public service. Um, if you go back to even, even Obama, where he had an overwhelming mandate by the voters to, to institute change, he came in and negotiated with the Republicans instead of negotiating, instead of doing what his voters wanted. And this time, I, I think that if we go in and vote for Joe Biden overwhelmingly and he feels like he has some sort of mandate, it's not going to be a mandate for progressives. It's going to be a mandate that his message is the winning message. And in turn, he needs to be the most centrist, the most conservative that he can be. So I think that, that it's a, a fool's errand to try to repeat the mistakes of the past and think that they're going to turn out with something something different. That's why we need more progressives, because as president, he cannot sign what doesn't come to his desk. So the people that are making the laws have to bring him something progressive, and then it's up to him whether he wants to veto it or not. But that's why we need more people coming in into the House and the Senate that are have more progressive views. So when the laws do come in that it's his job to sign, they reflect our policies. Gabe, I want to ask you a quick question. Um, I, I just put up a clip um, a day or two ago. We shouldn't be talking necessarily about Medicare for all because I just don't think it's going to happen in the United States. Would it be good? Yeah, I think it'd be great, but it's not going to happen. What about Medicare for children? Zero to 18, say. Um, it would be dirt cheap because kids are really, really healthy. Uh, it would sow the next generation. Uh, it would help us in education. It would help parents. Um, it so, seems to me it's a no-brainer. So I think we can fix the UXS system. It won't be as good as the European system. It just won't. Medicare, zero to 18. What would, would you consider that a win? If, you know, medic, let's say the Medicare, he, his, he wants to do, fifth, what was it, uh, 60 and up. So 60 and up, bringing the age down from 65 to 60. But this person, he was advocating to at least cover the children, the kids. So from zero to 18, would you consider that a win if we could get that passed under Joe Biden? You're not already covered. If you're like a single mom, you can get Medicaid and things like that up to 18. So I think that that's less of an issue. I think what we should focus on is that Hillary Clinton in 2016 wanted the Medicaid to go down to, what was it, 50 or 55? You know, yeah. Biden wants to take it down to less. He wants yeah. to take it down to, to, to 60 or something ridiculous. But yeah. we've gotten worse in policies than even under Hillary's campaign, where she was proposing more progressive things than Biden. So, yeah, I, I can't support Biden. I won't, unless he gives me something to vote for. 
Uh, I, I'm not going to just blindly support him because I'm not going to keep making the mistakes of the past that happened repeatedly. Now, I think that we should get more progressives in Congress and in state and local, but I'm not going to support Biden to, to, to come in and, and potentially continue to put the country back, albeit at a slower pace of regression than Trump, because Trump is atrocious. It's still, he's still not going to move us forward in any way. What would he have to do? You said directly not until he gives me something or not unless he gives me something give me some what are the top progressive policies free uh not free colleges free is a bad word it is taxpayer funded college so right now we fund k through 12 we need to fund all the way to 16th grade or trade school it's a it's a it's a policy that's shown to be an investment in the community that returns seven to one if you look mm -hmm. at, the, at the at the gi bill so based off mm -hmm. of that investment into our people it only costs 60 billion dollars per year it's like yeah. nothing. It's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. We just raised our it, military budget by about that much. He, he gives me no, that. It's, yeah, it's less than 10% of the military budget, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Raise the minimum wage. Say that you're going to raise the minimum wage to a, a wage tied to inflation, where the last minimum wage raise we nationally we got was under Bush. So, so much for our progressive champion, Obama. is like the minimum wage is a joke. So give me something there. Give, give me, of course, Medicare for all. Give me something like a Green New Deal. Give me something. But you yeah. can't, can't tell me not. You can't tell me you're gonna just have to vote for me and like it, and I'm not gonna give you anything that you like. In fact, I'm gonna give you several things that you don't like. Can't, gotcha. can't, can't buy it. Sorry. Hey, you know, you know how you how you really get uh, Biden to move to the left? Just get Obama on board, because we know Obama is running everything in the background. <laughs> oh, and that's not <laughs> happening. That's not happening. That's, that's, so we knew that from yeah. 20. Watch for the eight years that he was there, yeah. he didn't do anything. So we know it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. Obama's running the show. Everybody that knows politics, everybody knows that this is going to be another Obama administration. But the thing is, so going back, is in 2024, we have to primary. If Biden wins, we have to primary him. Like, right. If Biden wins, he's not going to rerun. He's, he already yeah, said he's a traitor. What happened?